Hey guys, uh, today I'm here with Novation's Launchpad. Uh, why don't you say hi, Launchpad? Hi. Um, we're going to show you a couple neat little tricks to do with the Launchpad. Um, earlier I was just searching online for uh, just any like YouTube videos on some neat little tricks and stuff with the Launchpad, and I haven't really found much. Um, so I want to show you kind of the stuff that I've learned in like the, the last like four months that I've had this. Um, so uh, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get visual feedback here on the launch pad. And what I mean by that is if you're playing a keyboard part or drum racks here in the user one mode, um, you'll actually get the LEDs to light up every time you press a button. So to do that, what we're going to do is go to create, insert MIDI track. And on that MIDI track, we're going to change the monitor to end. We're going to change the input here to launch pad. And on the MIDI out, we're going to change that to the launch pad output. And if you don't see this here, go to your preferences, which is um, Apple comma, and here in the MIDI sync, um, you see where the uh, where I have my launch pad hooked up here. Now on the input, the track and the remote is on, and on the output, the track is on. And you have to have that on in order to get the uh, the visual feedback. Um, so now that we have all that, um, we should be getting visual feedback. And we do awesome. So what if you hate yellow, which I'm sure there's some people out there that do. Um, what we're going to do is use the velocity tool to change the color. And um, in order to change the color, what happens on here is it reads the velocity um, that these buttons are being pressed and since this isn't velocity sensitive it's just reading this as um, 127 which is the maximum velocity so now with this velocity plugin right here that we just threw on here if you turn the out high on or if you turn it down it'll actually change the color so you could go if you really hate yellow you could go do it as red or you know, pretty much in any of these colors that you want to do. So that's all fun. It's really simple. Um, and I think in the actual uh, Novation video that they did on the launch pad, they showed you um, at least how to get the visual feedback. But um, I was messing around with just using some of these other MIDI effects, and you can really get some really wacky things that aren't very. I mean, they don't. I you know when you have this visual feedback, it's not making any sound. It's just correlating to what you're playing. So um, if you take the chord, um, a little plug-in for instance, and just shift some of these, you'll get, you know, it'll light up as more than one note when you're playing it. So that's kind of neat. Um, and the, you turn on the random, and turn the trance all the way up, turn choices all the way up, and now you get all kinds of stuff. Oops. Now you get all kinds of stuff going. And um, I think if we put this before velocity, will it? No. If we turn the random up on the velocity, it's going to randomize all the uh, the colors that it plays. So it's coming up as all kinds of stuff. And now if we put the arpeggiator on here, I should forget which way I put it. I think. Depending on how fast you want it, turn the sync off. Which let me just actually play um, a drum rack so you can kind of see like what this looks like when you're actually playing. Um, and also note length is a good one to use on here. Um, because this is kind of like... A, almost like a sustain pedal that you would have on a keyboard where um, if we turn this length all the way up it'll kind of hold the notes and when we have that arpeggiator on it's going to keep the arpeggiator going so Um, so that's really fun and also kind of useless at the same time just because you're not really I mean it's good if you're if like if you kind of have a setup like this where 
Um, you know, when you're out playing live, the audience can see your launch pad instead of just, you know, I mean, it's not very exciting even when you're just like launching clips and, oh wow, it's about to change to green, you know, that's not really all that exciting. So at least with this, if you're playing drum racks on here or something, it kind of makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, and really just play around with the order of all these effects and you can get, you can get really, really wild with it. and. I don't know, it'll make your live set maybe a little a little bit more interesting to people. Um, and the next thing I want to show you guys, which is something I've kind of already, I did in a previous video, um, which is using the slice to MIDI function. Um, but I'm going to kind of show you another little piece of that. And what we're going to do is I have two separate loops here, and I'll play both of them for you here real quick. <laughs> Okay, and both of those are from the uh, Danny Bird, um, I forget exactly, what's the, the name of it, um, the Loop Masters Danny Bird Drum and Bass Volume 2, which is a very, very good sample pack, lots of good loops and lots of good um, drum hits and snares, and the snares and the kick drums are just freaking awesome. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to slice both of these little loops up here but we're going to slice them up together and how we do that is I've highlighted these both um, click on them press tab and we're going to bring them over here and there are all already warped to you know the right to 170 BPM 75 BPM so they're all fine and good to go and we're going to highlight both of these and then control click and we're going to join these aka consolidate which is also Apple J and what that's going to do is it just turns it all into one file and then now we're going to control click and we're going to slice to a new MIDI track and I'm going to do quarter notes because it's a 16 bar loop and when it's cut into quarter notes it's going to bring us up um, 64 slices which is exactly how many buttons the launch pad has so let's go ahead and do that Okay, and let's turn the volume down a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the release all the way up to it. That is really, really loud. Okay, okay hold on one second. I got to put a velocity thing on here. For some reason, when I, I don't know if this will happen for you guys, but, oh, no, never mind. Okay. Okay, so on this side, if I play all of these, it'll play the uh, the little like synth loop we had. And over here, I have the drums. Okay, so now um, just with. Um, having these two little uh, loops here on each side, you can really, I don't want to call it remixing on the fly, but you can like play this stuff like live and kind of chop it up without using a beat repeat or anything. You're actually, you know, using your hands to do it, so. It's a little hard to play like this, but uh, you kind of get the idea. And um, I mean, there's a lot you can do with this because with um, most of the little drum uh, MIDI controllers, you usually only have 16 pads, which is great. But like with this, I mean, you have you have four sets of 16 pads. So um, you know, normally on like an MPD or you know some of the other stuff that Akai makes, you would have like you know you have just like whatever you're playing for that. It wouldn't be like a song, but whatever you're playing for, you know, a couple measures all in one, um, you know, all in 16 pads. And so you could technically have like almost like four songs up in here, you know what I mean? Like you could have drums right here and you could have like synth parts here and then maybe vocals cut up here and all kinds of stuff. So the possibilities with that are pretty much endless. 
Um, and the last little thing I want to show you is um, kind of something that I don't know if they did this in the original um, Novation video, but I haven't seen too many people talk about this. And what this is is um, controlling um, effects with these pads. And let me show you real quick. When we go to MIDI map, which click the little MIDI button, and we're going to MIDI map this auto filter here. And what I'm going to do is press on this right here, hold it, and then press this up here. So this whole line of notes is going to be controlling our auto filter. And you can see when I go here, oh, maybe it's backwards. Okay, that's fine. You see you can control the auto filter with all of these buttons instead of just pressing one button and kind of having it on or off. So now let's just play this and mess around a little bit. Okay, so that was a really bad example, but um, you kind of get the idea um, that, I mean, almost anything is possible with that. Any, you can assign any, uh, any parameter in here that you would normally MIDI map to just a knob. And uh, it kind of opens up for some creative, uh, um, some creative effect um, control. Like, I mean, if you use like a beat repeat, you know, you could have like where it, it's repeating 16th notes or 8th notes and... Um, I mean, the possibilities are kind of endless right there. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of all I got right now. If I think of anything that I'm not thinking of right now, I'll uh, make another video. But I hope you guys got something out of this, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace.